Welcome to Drawfee, where we take dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. I'm Nathan. I'm Jacob. And I'm Jake. And guys, we're back again to create the worst <laughs> video game. <laughs> and the worst intro. And yeah. the worst intro, both. <laughs> uh, hey, it, it, we got to start bad to get bad. To get bad. That's yeah. that's get, what I just said. Get it's bad, Friday stay bad. afternoon <laughs> and the energy's off. Energy's <laughs> off. It's after lunch. <laughs> that was It's Friday Afternoon by KB and the Boy Squad. I love the Boy Squad. KB, of course, short for Jake Young. <laughs> Our suggestion for this installment of the Bad JRPG series comes to us from Gabby T, who says, Please draw the worst JRPG cover art slash logo. It's thanks to Gabby T, uh, my favorite Sandra Bullock movie. Oh, like Gabby, Gabby T? Gabby Like Gravity? Like Grab? Mm-hmm. You fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so I think for like a bad JRPG box art, because I feel like JRPGs tend to have pretty cool box art. I'm thinking Final Fantasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They always have those like cool flowy, you know, gradient overlay sure. images. I'm like the worst box art in my opinion are like the Mega Man ones where it was clearly drawn by someone who had never played the game or, <laughs> or seen a person or possibly oh. had ever drawn before. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if this is truly bad JRPG box art, then of course it has to be the North American NES box art version. Yeah, yeah, Americanized of- <laughs> version, fantasy book cover, <laughs> fucking over-rendered yeah. mess. Yeah, so the inspiration shouldn't be uh, the Final Fantasy series. It should be the Dragon's Quest series. Oh, sure. Because that was Akira Toriyama of the Dragon Ball franchise, who has, I think I'm pretty safe to just assert, one of the most appealing art styles of all time. Yeah, and it's most like, recognized. like when people think anime who have never seen an- like any other anime, they think Akira Toriyama's art. Style. Just proven commercially viable, vibrant, friendly art, and instead they're like, no, 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 this is Dragon Warrior, starring a shirtless warrior guy and a dragon. Quests are for pussies. <laughs> Warriors only. This is America. I really like how the magic system in this game has progressed from the first entry. <laughs> Just me, a game localizer in the 80s and yeah. 90s. <laughs> also, make Kirby more pissed off. <laughs> How's, how's people supposed to know that Kirby's the hero if he's not ready to murder? Only heroes do all the kills. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot on your plate right now, Nathan, because, like, the crux is they always made the artwork, like, more quote-unquote realistic, but also bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, every main character becomes a 45-year-old man. <laughs> so that's, I'm drawing... You're going to have to get I'm some drawing, stubble. I'm drawing old man Chris right now. <laughs> some stubble on him and also... His sword should be gone, and instead he should have two guns. Yeah, he's just gonna—he's gonna be doing the, uh, yeah, like the Spec Ops uh, yeah. crossed guns. Oh. Cross guns. They're just regular handguns. My favorite. They're thing just about... normal ass giant handguns. Like the cross gun pose. The best thing about it is that there's never an occasion to do that in real life. Why would you ever do it? There's no reason. It's not defensive. It's just it's just to look rad. It's just to look uh, edgy. What if someone's trying to shoot you directly in the heart? And you block it with your crossed gun. <laughs> with your two guns. But then your guns get all fucked up. You can't shoot them anymore. Damn it. Yeah, man. I'm a war expert. <laughs> Where'd you serve? I served in uh, COD 1, <laughs> COD 2. And Medal of Honor Warfighter. And Medal, Medal of Honor Warfighter. I retired during the Black Ops campaign. <laughs> I served my time. You didn't want to get your hands dirty. So yeah, cross guns, stern man face. I gotta cross these guns better. <laughs> Ugh. God. It's a good thing you're not doing an undersketch for this elaborate pose with mechanical objects in it. Yeah. Get your edge lord out, Nathan. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a cool thing. Copy paste. Copy, Copy paste. paste. Oh, no. Guys, that's not what these subscribers paid to see. They wanted to watch me struggle to draw two <laughs> identical. Man, Drawfee really like kind of fell off a cliff once Nathan stopped 
just hitting the undo key for five straight minutes. <laughs> I feel like Reaper in Overwatch is the only one who really gets to pull this off because it's like it seems semi-ironic. Yeah, <laughs> like he he gets that. They cranked his edge up so much. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the story with Reaper is that he was an actual character in Titan, the team's previous over-budget thing that took like ten years in development. So, like, when he was first designed, Reaper was legit cool. Yeah. <laughs> Drowning Pool was hitting the charts. Linkin Park was not an ironic reference. Like, Reaper was the coolest. He would have been in the prime of his yeah. life. You'd see, like, dudes at TGI Fridays with, like, a cool Reaper tattoo on the back of their leg. For like, sure. right on the calf, you know, the one-toned part of a fat body. Right on their big, meaty calf. <laughs> <laughs> the pop- one-toned part of a fat body. Yeah, because it's got to be extra toned to support the body. I mean, all right, listen, I don't want to... <laughs> Let's no, Jake, put, the put them back. Put them back. Put the calves Look away. Look at this hunk of brisket. <laughs> I can't stop looking. It's so smooth and yet powerful. Oh, God. This is so, uh, I guess, yeah, you have to keep the hair so it's still crisp, but everything else is so... I'm also really good at drawing guns, guys. I should have finished drawing, like, actually doing the hands good before I copy-pasted instead of... Well, no, you're capturing, like, because, I mean, you talked about the, the Mega Oh, yeah, Man no, this, oh, it's bad on purpose. It's bad on purpose. It's bad on purpose. It's bad on purpose. <laughs> TMTM. TM. It's realism, but with horrible proportions. Yeah. That's, like, super clutch. Yeah, okay. This is how it's supposed to look, because it's bad, so it's okay, because it's bad. Um, I'm already imagining the poor kids at Blockbuster that just wanted some, like, powerful violence, and then they yeah. get to play <laughs> Legend of Grizz, like, Bzz, I'm your fly butler. <laughs> I'm 12, and I'm very mad at this. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe, yeah, his body is just sort of... Is there like... a mini game where you just... <laughs> argue with your mom about making the bed? What is happening? I am going to give him, split I am going like... to gi- I'm giving him the Mega Man like, l- just like oh, okay. Google oh, okay. Google Mega Man box art. Yeah, yeah. Um, I and... thought he was doing like a Jean-Claude Van Damme oh, sort yeah. of split. <laughs> All of his designs just going to be a little off. So he's going to have a little belt buckle uh, instead of the big belt buckle. It's just, he's just wearing a regular belt, and then he does still have the one mesh short. <laughs> that gets to stay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing that every designer was like, can't get rid of that. Oh, it's like Mickey Iconic. Mouse's ears. But then he has like robot legs, legs <laughs> knees. Yeah, Jacob, do you want to add to this masterpiece? Yeah, man. Let me get in here. <laughs> If there's one thing the cover needs Mm -hmm. in order to be a cool, rad, American, hyper-violent cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First things first, a quick edition. Okay. Oh. It just needs to have, like, a big sticker on it that says, like, Game of the Year edition. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Or something. This is the special Game of the Year. Now we're confusing our eras. Because, like, that's, like, a huge PS3, Xbox 360 era thing. I mean, we're, we've we already confused our eras. This yeah. is this is Mega Man with, yeah, this is, with Reaper guns. This is <laughs> all eras of bad box art design. We're combining them all. The current era where they have all of the fucking reviews, like, <laughs> on the cover. It's, like, behind the drawing. <laughs> like, 10 out of 10. 10 goods. 6 out of 3. <laughs> says, cool box. Games. Okay, but then to to balance it out, can you add like one of those Starburst stickers, like those like really gaudy ones? Oh, those are like yeah, yeah, pointy old one ones that just is like like an Nintendo. Now s- with graphics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like an award, but it's literally just like saying a feature. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put has that, levels. We'll put that in here. <laughs> Programming. <laughs> Four bits of programming action. <laughs> it's going to say, now with controller support. <laughs> Before, in the old version, you just couldn't. <laughs> you had to attach individual electrodes to the... Yeah, you couldn't play it. You had to, like, rig it up yourself to make it work somehow. <laughs> In Game of the Year edition, we got it down. Mm. We got the controller support in there. But what I was also thinking drawing-wise yeah. is that a cool thing that games like to do is the back-to-back pose. Oh, sure. Mm. So I'm thinking we get a Lucianosaurus man oh, going back-to-back. He's nice. like the villain, but he's also kind of like back here, too. Yeah, he's on there, for sure. We're already conveying more information about the actual game than Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Why aren't there any space pineapple trees here? <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't there just yellow butts coming out of the ground. <laughs> I forgot about the yellow butts. <laughs> if you guys want to laugh, read uh, Andrew Bridgman's description of the Mega Man box <laughs> art article for Dorkly. It's very good. Dorkly.com, Dorkly.com slash the, the good Bridgman article. The good, 
Google it. Stop watching this video and Google it. No, if they should, if they want to stop watching this video, they should download my podcast, Wizard and the Bruiser. <laughs> oh, that's true. We that's... did a two-parter on Castlevania and Metroid, two classics of the 8-bit era. Wow. Wow. Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> So Lucianosaurus, also 45-year-old man. <laughs> it's the default. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, when I was a kid, there was nothing I wanted to be more than 45 years old. 45 years of age, you the can... strongest age yeah. to be. <laughs> you can buy all the candy at the movie theater when you're 45. They do not check. Yeah, I want two boxes of Bunch of Crunch. <laughs> I have a job. He still has like the anime kind of emo swoop hair. Yeah. He's just back here. He's a little too far back He's there way right too now. Far because, back. Okay, wait. I think Is I have he on a, a separate yeah, layer. I, no, I like that. He, I have a different angle I can go on with this now. He's just. He's, <laughs> He's just right, right behind is he, him. Is he like in one of those like Native American baby bond bundles on Chris's back? He's, oh. Oh. He's in a bent over pose. Oh. So this can get us like some sex appeal too. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so, like good. his body's going like under here. You do you want some butt? Yeah, you on... want to get some, some strong <laughs> butt back here. So he's got on like kind of a sexy little number. <laughs> <laughs> little kind of frilly underwear. Oh, no. Uh, the bicep but, and the butt are too close together. All of, I'm getting so many mixed signals. And there's his, like his shoulder. Cause he's, <laughs> he's still going to have a gun. Is his gun so long that it uh, goes through the I ceiling mean, and yeah, the floor? Yeah, his gun is so long. He's got a long gun. He's gonna have he's gonna have a long gun for sure. Now I have to remember how to draw guns. Uh, he does still have like leg hair because okay, good. Mm -hmm. He's still a strong man. He's a strong forty-five year old man who does not shave his legs. He does not shave his legs. Why would he? <laughs> um, so he's got like a revolver type of deal. One of them long revolvers. One of them long, them longer revolvers. Really long revolvers are a thing that actually exists. Yeah, and I love them. They do they're look so stupid. They look very fun. They look, they're so dumb, but so like cool. Are they like- Oh, like the Joker had in uh, the first Batman movie? Yeah. These guns look like something like yeah. this. Kind yeah. Of. They have a, I mean, they're just tubes within gun, tubes. Guns have triggers. They got triggers. These days. So this one's going to be going up this way. Okay. Off the box art. Off the box art. Good. And then it's going to be coming back around and like poking him in the butt cheek. Oh. Oh, not going into the butt. Not going just into the butt. The butt. Just hitting the butt. Yeah, that would, just... that would up the ESRB rating if it were going into the butt. <laughs> Online interactions. Are oh, not Joe rated. Lieberman would freak the fuck out if that was if yeah, that was the case just, back in the just day. Just going like this. Oh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Jo Remember Joe Lieberman, guys? Classic point of reference for teens these days. <laughs> I mean, you never if you, know. If you want to know how politics got to be the way they are, you got to start with Joe Lieberman. Oh, uh, you know, there's video games that I've seen where there's villains shoving their own gun barrels up their anuses. <laughs> <laughs> Here's like the rest of his leg down there. Do you know the horrible secret about Joe Lieberman in video games? What? They were like all these hearings in the 90s where like, you know, Mortal Kombat was too bloody and like all these gun accessories were too violent. Mm -hmm. And it was literally uh, Nintendo lobbied him to do it. Oh, because they like a Nintendo they, they, lobbyist they... personally went to his office and showed him all like the cool Sega games that like because they were competition sell, and they were the competition I and that's that. what started that whole thing. That's nefarious. Nintendo, right? Nintendo, no, we've got to put like some sort of like big monster in the background. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking just like it's a fantasy game. A big game. skitter bug. A big skitter bug. Oh my god. Remember that guy? Shadow of the skitter <laughs> bug. How did he look? It doesn't matter. The person who drew this never saw one. Correct. Yeah, the, uh, the American name of the game is Chris of War, Shadow of the Skitter Bug. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna have like a dragon's tail. This ain't gonna fit on the, the cover. It's a famicom. The games have vertical covers. No, 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 no it's, not this one. Not this one. Not, okay. It's a <laughs> Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo card. Right, it's, okay. a, it's a double wide. A double wide. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a two disc game, but they have it in like a double wide case. <laughs> Custom case job. Oh, my. How did no one ever try and pull that off? A double cartridge game. Yeah, it would have been pretty cool. Because I, I, if I were a kid and I saw that, I'd be like, that's like twice the game. I got to get that. Here's the thing you're like, oh, that's too expensive. Just like leave the other one blank. Put Gunthia on the cover. Yeah. I think she's more suited to American sensibility. Oh, yeah. She, she is the American sensibility. Well, she can be, she's up here. But she has to be like a damsel now. She has to be pretty. Oh, okay. It's just Gunthia looking really mad in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't agree to this, yeah. to this cover art. <laughs> it was mainly Chris and Lucianosaurus' idea. <laughs> Trust me, this'll sell well in Peoria. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Wait, does Chris have a voice in your head? Yeah, yeah didn't, just e- like, didn't even break a sweat. Didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Typical spunky anime teen. But in this version, he's, he's more like this. Didn't even break a sweat. I've got balls of steel. Right? I'm just a normal school kid at Sakamoto High School. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to eat some cheeseburgers with my friends after school. <laughs> They're clearly eating like noodles. That's my favorite part about American like localization of things mm. is when they just call foods an American name. And it's, it's like, I know that's not a hamburger. That's not a donut, dude. Those are sushis. <laughs> I can see the rice. I can, I can see it. It's right there. In Persona games, they like really overly Americanized it for the first one. PlayStation, but then they made the sequel take place in Japan like normally. But there's characters from the first game in Persona 2 in America. It's like Kenji and Makoto and Craig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I, hanging I watched, out together. Uh, I watched like a YouTube video about the history of that, and it's it's really funny. Like the hoops they had to jump through to make it work. <laughs> Stephanie and Sakamoto. <laughs> So this is this is all well and good, but we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't pay homage to some good JRPG cover art as well. You, you got some ideas in here? I have an idea. In that old head of yours? Interesting. What we need is just a good old-fashioned gradient on top of this. Oh, you're, oh, you're yeah. crossing the streams. You're going to get one of them Final Fantasy rainbow gradients. Yeah. One of them purpley ones. Sure. That goes to like a... Like a warm color, like maybe a like maybe like an like orange. An orangey. Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? There it is. There it is. It's <laughs> nearly illegible. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> <laughs> Can you add one more thing for me, Nathan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you put another sticker on the cover that says "disc not included"? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Thank you. That's gonna be right here. When you buy it, you this is you're buying the box. <laughs> to be clear, you can download the game later at home, but you'll have to repurchase it. It doesn't come with a download code. <laughs> <laughs> but there is lovingly packed a single alive moth in each box, so as you open it, it, it flies, flies out. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess like like draw a few grams of moth food. Yeah, <laughs> because we really, it's very important to it's the experience. Incomprehensible the amount of money it took <laughs> to pull that off. Money that could have gone towards releasing a good game. <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> for the goof. Uh, do it for the goof. Do it for the goof. Th- this is going to sell. This, this is, is lovely. This is what marketing came up with, and uh, we don't have enough leverage to, uh, no. to tell them no. So, Guys, the numbers just came in. We, we sold them all. We sold them all. We, so, we sold all the boxes. We sold them all. We're, now we just got to find, now we just got to make the game. We just got to make so the game. Can get the... <laughs> I mean, you set out to do bad JRPG box art, and you have succeeded, my friend. Wow. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Feel free to leave a suggestion of other JRPG stuff you want to see us ruin, or just other stuff you want to see us draw that we will probably ruin. Check out Wizard and the Bruiser. On iTunes. Please, I desperately need it. Check out What Should We Draw uh, on iTunes as well. And uh, watch us on Facebook and on Twitch. The, all the all the links to stuff is in the description. Click on all of it. Click on all of it. Uh, subscribe. We're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs>